This video will explain the basics of Ultradox forms. To get started, drag and drop a form building block from the sidebar. This will open a dialog where you can customize the form. Enter a simple and unique variable name for each form field. You will find a number of additional options depending on the field type. In this string field we can for example specify the placeholder to be shown if the field is empty. Let's add another text field from the bottom toolbar. Again we specify a reasonable variable name, a prompt for the user and a placeholder if the text field is empty. If you are not currently working on a field, you will get a preview of how the field looks in the resulting form. You can add all types of fields from the toolbar at the bottom. Let's add a number field. In a number field you can specify min and max values as well as the step. In this example the user must enter an integer value between 1 and 8. Let's also add a boolean field which is a yes or no question. Depending on the field type you will get a nice control to enter the value. Boolean fields, which are yes or no questions, will simply result in a checkbox. When creating date or time fields, you will get date or time pickers accordingly. Picking the correct field type is important, not only to get the correct control in your form, but also to render the value properly when using it in your templates. Just like Google Forms, Forms in Ultradox also provide more complex field types like multiple choice, checkboxes, scales and grid questions. Let's add some checkboxes to see how this works. Again we enter a variable name and a prompt for the user, as well as the possible choices. These choices will be displayed in the form to choose from. To keep your template simple when working with checkboxes, you can optionally specify a value for each choice. Click on Enable Other to add a checkbox where the user can enter his own choice. Once editing is complete, you will see how the resulting checkboxes question will look like. Let's also add a grid question to the form. After giving it a simple and reasonable name, we can specify a number of columns and rows just like in Google Forms. Enter columns and rows as a list of comma separated values. Each row will then be displayed as a number of radio buttons to pick from. Once editing is complete, you will get a preview of the resulting form field. Clicking on Apply will close the dialog and display the resulting form on the left-hand side of the building block. On the right-hand side of the building block, you will find all the resulting variables that will be populated by this form. Now it's time to enter some data into the form to populate the variables on the right-hand side. As you can see, the control in each form field will help you to enter valid values. After entering the data, make sure to click on the Save button to apply the entered values. Now that you know how to create and fill an Ultradox form, let's check out how to merge the entered data into your documents. Let's add a Google Docs to PDF building block to see how this works. Clicking on Create will create a blank Google document on Google Drive that is linked to Ultradocs. We can then open the Ultradocs template editor from the add-ons menu in Google Docs. The sidebar will greatly help you to insert the placeholders holding the data that we've entered into the form. Click on a variable to insert it at the cursor position. Depending on the variable type, you will find a number of matching formatting options to choose from. As an example, let's render the name in uppercase letters. As you can see, the icon on the right hand side of each variable reflects the field type that we've picked in the form. When inserting a number, you will get the number specific formatting options like the pattern or locale to be used. When inserting a variable, the matching formatter is pre-selected. 
Address is a text field, so the string renderer is pre-selected. As we know that it contains a postal address, we can select the map renderer instead. This will render a nice map from the entered postal address. The map renderer comes with a bunch of formatting options, like the map type, zoom level, width and height of the resulting image. When clicking on Insert, the Merge tag and all the specified formatting options will be inserted at the cursor position. Let's now check out how to render a boolean value representing true or false. By default it will be rendered as a check mark, but there are other symbols to choose from. Boolean values also allow you to assemble your document from predefined text blocks. If you want to learn more about that, please check out the template tutorials to see how to use if and else statements in your templates. As a simple example, let's insert different sentences if the pets checkbox is checked or unchecked. Clicking on the preview icon will merge the data into the template and display the resulting document. As expected, the name is displayed in uppercase letters and we are getting a map of the entered address. As we did not check the pets checkbox, we get the unchecked symbol and the sentence specified in the else block in our template. Let's change some values to see if everything works as expected. Simply reload the preview to run the merge again. Pets is checked and we are getting the other sentence from the if statement. Let's now see how to access data from the more complex field types. Each individual checkbox is available as a boolean variable. So again you could render it as symbols or assemble text blocks based on the checked items. But the selection can also be rendered as a table. To do so, click on the Tables tab in the Template Editor. The variables that can be displayed as a table appear on top. Select the columns that you want to display and the layout that you want to use as a starting point. Feel free to use all formatting capabilities of Google Docs to improve the table layout. The merge tags appear in square brackets. This tells Ultradocs to generate a row for each entry. In the same way, we can display the selections from a grid question. Let's pick the alternate rows layout as a starting point to render even and odd rows differently. Of course, all the formatting capabilities of Ultradocs, like rendering data as a map, are also available in tables. Check out the online help to learn more about generating tables from complex data with Ultradocs. Let's reload the preview to see what we've got. As we did not specify a formatter for the boolean values, they just display their raw value, which can be true or false. Let's finally have a look at the most complex field type in Ultradocs, which is the table type. You can specify a table where each column has a different data type. As an example, let's create a table to order various beverages. To be able to select rows, we will add a checkbox as the first column, followed by the name of the beverage, a quantity box and a comment field. We have to enter a list of comma-separated variable names in the columns field to assign a unique variable to each column. Next we'll have to enumerate the column types. A boolean will be rendered as a checkbox, so that's correct for the first column. Then we need a label, a number and a string. We've now specified four different columns with different data types, the associated variable names as well as the displayed table header. Finally, we'll have to enter some default values for each row to be displayed. Again, each value is comma-separated and the rows are separated with a semicolon. Make sure to specify the same number of columns in all the different fields. I'm creating four rows separated by a semicolon with four columns each separated by a comma. Clicking on Apply will close the dialog and update the form so that we can enter some data. As expected, we now find a nice table at the bottom of the form. Each column comes with the correct input control depending on the selected data type. 
Let's enter some data so that we then can check out how to access the data from the template. Don't forget to save the entered data. When switching back to Google Docs, you'll notice that the new beverages field will automatically show up in the tables tab of the template editor. Let's select all columns and insert them as a simple table. Of course, you're totally free to rearrange the columns. They must not match the order in the form. Let's render the checked variable as a nice checkbox by using the Boolean renderer. For the moment, I'll not spend any time on improving the table layout, but let me at least adjust the table headers. Let's reload the preview to see what we've got. We should find the entered data in a table at the bottom of the document. There it is. That's it for now, but there's much more to explore. Thanks for watching.